Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all that kind of stuff. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. Thanks for tuning in, stopping by, and hanging out. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today, my friends, I'm showing you Luminar AI. This is the beta version. They have allowed me to make a video to show how the product looks today. It's a beta, so by definition, things are gonna change. I wanted to be clear about that. I'm gonna walk you through a few photos, show you some of the features. This is not a comprehensive review. There's too much to talk about in one video. You know I'm gonna be back with more, but I just wanted to clarify. It, uh, it still comes out late this year. You can get it at the link below, which is an affiliate link. They pay me a small commission if you purchase off my link, and you know that I'll be providing free training videos here when it launches. In the meantime, I've got the beta version. I'm gonna show you how it works, what it's all about, and that kind of stuff. Let's get into it. Now, as you know, Luminar AI is not an upgrade or a replacement for Luminar 4. It is a new product built from the ground up with the idea of AI in mind. It's focused on results, not processes or tools. However, if you're like me and you like to tinker with the tools and mess around with the sliders, you can still do that. I'm going to show you that as well. Let's get going, my friends. Here's the base interface. So let me just be really clear. If you have a previous version of Luminar, most notably Luminar 4, you are going to feel very at home here. The transition process, if you want to call it that, moving from Luminar 4 to Luminar AI is not difficult. You're immediately going to feel at home. You've got photos here on the right-hand side. I'm in the catalog tab, by the way, across the top are four tabs. That is basically a suggest suggested workflow going from left to right. So I'm in catalog tab. I've just got a, a folder on my desktop with a whole bunch of images. I play around with these. I do experiments with these. Some of these make it into videos. Some you may recognize if you've been here before, but I just went over here, added a folder. It stuck it in there. Works like a champ. So I want to show you some of the different things that you can do. And the first thing that begins with is picking a photo. So I'm going to pop over here. I'm going to grab this photo of Pato Lake and I'm going to click templates. You could also just double click and you will notice that the template section comes up on the right hand side. Now there are a number of, of categories and all of this is not finalized. This will give you a good idea of what it's like. You can see on the right hand side, I'm scrolling through various categories. Landscape seems like a really good category to start in considering the subject of this photo. But there's also an essentials category that has landscapes in it. I'm gonna uh, choose that. I'm gonna click on fast fix and you're gonna see that apply to the photo right away. Let me show you, there's before and there's after. So that's the fast fix template, um, one click. So I could say, oh, I'd rather have pleasing touch or I'd rather have clear skies. And I don't know what all of these look like on the photo. I'm just kind of clicking. I'd say as of now, I like fast fix best, but some of you like to edit your photos. So it's quick and easy to do. By the way, let me back up. On the bottom right here, you can see, you can uh, click a heart there to favorite the fast fix template. Um, and you can also adjust the opacity. If it's too much for, for some reason, um, you can just turn it down. But if you wanna go edit that further, you just click on edit and it pops you over to the tools tab. Now, if you used Luminar 4, you're gonna recognize these tab icons. The first one is essentials, same as in the previous uh, in Luminar 4, then creative and then portrait and then pro. But some things are different. For example, composition AI and erase are right there on the essentials tab. These are new ways of um, using the tools within Luminar. And I think it's part of the AI, especially composition AI, by definition is uh, AI based. But this gives you quick and direct access and using Erase does not create a new layer. It's basically um, something you can do. And I think, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that, something you can do as you're editing the photo without worrying about, oh, I created a new layer and now I'm not editing you know, on the base layer or whatever. So I think that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna go back to templates. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go back to catalog. I'm gonna grab another photo and show you another example. And in this case, I'm gonna get over here. I'm gonna double click on this photo. And this is from Haystack Rock in Oregon. And I've got that photo open. I'm gonna click on templates. Um, and you know what, actually, you know what? I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna go straight to edit because I don't wanna use a template. I wanna you know, mess around with the tools. So I'm gonna say edit. I'm gonna click on that. And let me show you composition AI. So you open that up. And you can see that the cropping window is there, but if you click on Composition AI, 
It uses AI to analyze the photo and it suggests a new composition for you. And there it is. It's basically cropped, uh, shrunk my photo, uh, or, you know, by cropping it a little bit and focused in on Haystack Rock. I can just hit enter to accept that and it'll apply that composition AI setting to my photo. And for some reason, let's say I've got a spot in the sky, which I do, I can set my brush radius and I can say, hey, I want to get rid of that spot. And I think I saw a spot over here. Uh, a couple of them, you know, my lens was kind of dirty. I'm going to say erase, get rid of those and be done with the spots and the composition before I even start my editing. Now I can go into the various tools like light and I can say, hey, Jim, maybe I want to make this a little bit cooler and maybe I want to add a little uh, smart contrast, pull down the highlights, pull up the shadows. Maybe I want to pop to a uh, enhance AI, which has accent AI in it. And I'm going to have trouble getting all these straight because it was Accent AI in a previous version. And then in Luminar 3 and Luminar 4, it was AI Accent. Now it's Accent AI again. It's okay. The tool's there. It's amazing. It's doing great things on my photo. I'm happy about that. You can kind of see, you can follow this um, flow, if you will, of going through. You've got Creative tab, and that's where you have Sky AI, which you also may know as AI Sky Replacement. You've got Atmosphere AI. You've got Mystical, you've got Glow, which also includes Orton here in uh, one of the drop-down menus. You can turn that on if you want to, and you can choose Orton like that. Orton effect, let me, let me drag the slider. There you go, just added a little Orton to it. Maybe I like that. Maybe I want to pop over to Pro. On Pro, you have Optics, which you used to know as Lens and Geometry. You also have Clone and Stamp, because that's a little bit more of an advanced feature. It's on the Pro tab. Lots of flexibility. I love the layout and how they've kind of reimagined some of the alignment of the tools like Erase and Clone and Stamp and Composition, uh, especially Composition AI and Erase being at the very top of this first tab, which basically says, hey, let's get the, get the composition right. Let's get rid of any distracting elements. Then let's go edit. I love that setup. So now I'm back in Catalog. I've clicked on this image and I'm going to go over to Edit. Uh, no, actually, I'm going to go to templates one more time. I'm going to say, I'm going to say fast fix. There we go. That looks great. But hey, I like that, but I want to edit or customize a little bit. So you can go over here and you can see the tabs that have the little dots above them, like essentials and pro. They are the ones that have tools that have been applied in this template. So I'm going to go back over here. Let's say I want a little bit more um, accent AI, and maybe I want to uh, increase contrast a little bit. Maybe I want to give it a little bit of a temperature reduction to cool it off. And you know what, while I'm looking at it, I want to pull down the highlights too. So I basically used a template, customized it, and now I'm in a spot where I'm thinking, this is really cool. But you know what would look really cool is sticking a little bit of fog on there. So that's where you go to the Creative tab, and you go to the new Atmosphere AI, and you have the ability to add fog. But the great thing about this tool is it's built on the idea of 3D depth mapping. So it's actually, instead of just sticking a foggy template on top or a foggy texture on top of your photo, it's applying it uh, based on depth, as you can see here. So I can say amount, and you can see it's basically, it's not covering the entire photo. It's really starting in the back, which is naturally how you're gonna see it. You're gonna see less fog up front and more in the distance. But if you wanna increase the depth, you can see that you can kind of pull that forward into the photo and of course, adjust the lightness of it. So if I turn this off, there's before and there's after. You've got a nice application of fog. I think that's really cool. I do want to show you some portrait stuff. So let me hop over there because there's so much to talk about and I just will keep talking. So let's hop over to portrait and do a quick demo of a couple of those features as well. And by the way, before I jump to portraits, I know everybody wants to know about the local masking option. And that is this icon over here. So if you're looking at these four tabs and you see this little uh, looks like a little paintbrush or pencil head or something over there. If you click on that, that does take you to local masking. And you can click here to add, and you can add multiple masking tools to any image. However, they have told us don't share very much at all about that tool at this moment because it is going to change. So I don't want to share anything in this video. I'll have to come back and do that for you in another video. But I wanted to acknowledge that you're probably curious about it. I have been using it and it works just fine, but they said some things are gonna change, so I don't wanna share that uh, for fear that it'll get in your mind and you'll think it's gonna be one way and it ends up being another. Whereas a lot of the rest of this UI, I think is pretty close to being locked. Some things are gonna change, but supposedly the local masking uh, brush or adjustment tool is gonna change a fairly significant amount, I guess, I'm not sure. So. 
I'm not gonna put it in this video, but trust me, as soon as I can, I'll be back with more details about it. All right, let's get to portraits. Okay, here's a portrait of a young lady taken by Robert Vanelli. He's the director of education at Skyloom, a friend of mine, and he's loaned me some of his portrait photos to have a play around with. So you can, uh, again, I clicked on templates and you can come in here and you can say in essentials, there's people. Maybe I wanna check that out. Maybe I wanna use this iconic and boom, it's applied. You can always come down here and hit reset. And let's say you just wanna go over and do everything yourself. You can just hop over here to the portrait tab um, on, the, on the tools menu under edit, of course. And you've got face AI. So you've got several sections here, which allows you to really customize the look of the photo. You've got face light and slim face, which you may be familiar with. You've got iris visibility. Um, this basically impacts how visible the iris is and you can change that color. Let's say I wanted to make her a blue eyed person. Now I'm gonna zoom in a bit so you can see that a little bit better. Now the blue eyes, they're kind of over the top here. I made them blue. Let me go back to original. So there she is, brown eyed, goes great. Blue eyes, a little bit over the top, but you can bring that iris visibility down and make it a little bit more of a subtle blue eye implementation. You can add some flair. You can enlarge eyes, whiten the eyes. Let's maybe whiten the eyes a little bit, maybe enlarge them a tiny bit, maybe a tiny bit of iris flare. Um, as I do that, you'll see a little bit of that light flare in the bottom of her eyes. So these are things I think you wanna be gentle with. I think most people prefer kind of a natural look with their portraits, assuming you're not doing some conceptual modern art kind of thing, in which case, you know, hey, go crazy. You got mouth section down here as well with lips and all that. I think you're probably um, aware of those things. And just to be clear, the menus actually um, stay collapsed and then you can open them um, to get into those sections for eyes and mouth. For Skin AI, you have, um, this is basically skin smoothing and shine removal, and it actually has skin defects removal as well. You may be familiar with some of these tools from Luminar 4. And now they have Body AI. Now I'm gonna zoom back out, and to be clear, this is not a judgment. Um, some people prefer to leave things natural. Some people like to enhance the look of the, the body shape. It's fine either way. You can go either direction. You can um, kind of shrink that or widen it a little bit. Now, clearly, she's not um, in need of any of this, to be honest. If I'm taking a picture of myself, it would probably be pretty good to do some of this work. Um, abdomen, if you'll look at her stomach area, this actually kind of collapses, almost like a little bit of a pin cushion look where it's pulling that in a little bit. Um, and then this expands the size of the area, um, as I understand it. I'm still getting used to some of these tools, but that's a quickie on some of the portrait stuff. It's really powerful with face AI. I love the iris, uh, the ability to change those colors. I think you could do some really cool conceptual stuff with that. Skin AI and body AI, really powerful portrait editing tools in Luminar AI that again, uh, most of these are all AI based. There are 10 AI tools in Luminar AI, five of which are brand new to us. So I'm looking forward to you guys having this and I'm continuing to experiment and play with this and provide some beta testing feedback to my friends over there at Skyloom. So at this point, you know, you could be ready to go and then you've got the export menu and you've got a few options here. Again, this is me just totally guessing. I've said this in other videos. I'm assuming this section is gonna expand over time and give you more capability. But for now, that's what it looks like. I'm gonna go back to the catalog and just kinda, you know, this is where I start and this is where I would launch my photos and follow the workflow. And you can even see the arrows kinda point as you hover over these. Start with catalog to choose your photo. Use a template to quickly get to a result that you like. Edit if you need or want to customize and then export when you're finished. It's a results oriented workflow, as I said, designed to quickly get you where you wanna go. And while it's designed for photographers, it's designed for a lot of other people as well. For people that just want quick results and want to not have to worry about the tools, Luminar AI is perfect for that. At the same time, people like me that do like to get into the tools and have great control over the photos, you still have access to those tools. I'm gonna continue having fun. I'm gonna continue showing videos about Luminar AI. I hope you come back and watch them. And um, now that I've got it, you can ask me questions about it and I'll do my best to answer. Feel free to leave comments down below, thumbs up, subscribe, all that kind of stuff if you haven't yet. And I'll see you soon, my friends. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Hope you're staying safe and well, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves and adios.